This podcast is for mature audiences only. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome back to From Crime to Crime. Hey, buddy. How's it going? Yeah, I'm fine. You're fine. Nobody cares. What are we doing? Sorry about our absence, guys. We're not going to explain it at all. Yeah, I mean, we were busy. (laughs) Things happen. It's summer. Yeah. We're back now. Yep. That's all that matters. Yeah. So this first episode back is going to be a little different. One, because we have to kind of get back into the routine of recording. We forgot how to do this, to be honest. I wasn't even sure how to set everything up, so. Yeah. And we're pretty into the Olympics right now, so we thought that we could touch on some of the crimes and scandals revolved around the Olympic Games. I love the Olympics, especially the summer ones. Like, And I think most people say that, right? Like, most people are really into the summer Olympics. Now, Joanne only likes the Olympics. (laughs) I know. I know. Yeah. We have a listener who only likes the the Winter Olympics, and it's like, okay, but you're in the minor- <laughs> minority by a long shot. Yeah, I get way too into it. I literally couldn't care less about rowing for four years at a time, but all of a sudden, throw an American flag on their shirt, and I'm like, super fan. USA. USA. That's why we're all curling fans yeah. during, during the Winter yeah. Olympics. No, nobody watches the Winter Olympics. Kind of true. The WNBA players are playing in the Olympics this year. Are you going to watch that? No. No, no. I mean, probably. No, no, no like, W team, team USA? No. I mean, I might watch it a little bit just because it's like, USA, go. But I don't. I'm not big on basketball in general. I don't even watch the boys one. I know. So. I love basketball. But right now, like, I think everybody gets really into swimming right now. And otherwise, nobody's paying attention to swimming. Nobody has any idea who anybody is except, yeah. like, right now. Like, every four years, it's just right. we go into it. Well, that's why this year has been super cool with all the athletes that on TikTok. Oh. They're showing, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff of the Olympics, and it's kind of rad. Like the cardboard bed? Yeah. The, and the plastic mattresses. and It is pretty nuts. There's a lot going on over there. Yeah, but it's cool. Like they show the Olympic Village and the grocery store they get to go to and like all the behind the scenes stuff that you would never normally see. So Yeah, I like all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and I'm super excited about the break dancing. That's gonna be pretty fun. There's break dancing in the Olympics now? Yeah, this is the first time. And I heard a synopsis of the rules on the Sports Illustrated Daily Rings podcast. It's like a podcast that they're doing just for the Olympics. Wow, you and really did some may- deep research for this. Yeah, but and maybe it was the way the guys on the podcast framed it, but the way they explained the rules for the break dancing, it sounded like the rules were made up by Michael Scott. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, I'm sure it was just like the way they explained it, but first of all, it's called break or breaking. They're real particular about that. They don't want it to be called break dancing. I mean, yeah, I've heard that. I've, I've heard that expression before. Yeah, and the competitors are going to be referred to as B boys and B girls. Yeah, no, that's all part of this this like culture. That's what uh-huh. they do. Yeah, but every B boy and B girl has like a street name, like a nickname. So instead of them saying like Ryan Smith for the USA competing against Jim Kingston from Great Britain, they're gonna say B boy Rye Guy of the USA against <laughs> B boy Jiminy Crickets. <laughs> Of the of Great Britain. So to put it lightly, I'm pretty excited about the nicknames because that could be the best part of this. Do you thing. have your own B-Girl nickname? No. <laughs> I'd never even heard of this until like three days ago. Oh, I mean. So I'm pretty excited about if it. If I had heard about it earlier, I would have come up with an, my own my own B-Boy nickname. I know. Like G-Money. Well, and then I. I'm, B-Boy G-Money. Yeah. I mentioned it to Matt, too. My And he's like, yeah, that's part of the culture of breakdance. Like, they're called. Be- I'm like, oh, I didn't know it was like. Every white boy goes through like a thing. They're like, maybe I should, you know, get into breakdancing because that's what I'm made for. Or DJing. Or DJing, yeah. <laughs> I never got into DJing, but dude, I'd love, I would love to be a musician so bad. Like, I don't want to work towards it or anything, but no, I would love not. to be just like a legit musician. Yeah. So anyway, pretty excited about that. But all jokes aside, there are a few scandals this year, as there always are during the Olympics. Aside from the normal, like, who's banned for doping and all that stupid shit, there's actually two... (laughs) Who's banned for cheating? We don't want to... We don't care. Give them steroids. Yeah. I mean, it makes it more interesting, but that's a whole side (laughs) podcast. You definitely grew up in the baseball steroid era. Jeez. (laughs) Yeah. Well, fucking baseball so boring now. It's like, guys, it was way better when they were juicing. I disagree. I like small ball, but I'm in the minority on that one. Me and Joanne. Yeah. 
All jokes aside, though, there's actually two really, really sketchy side stories going on around the Olympics right now. The first one that I'm going to tell you about, Grant, because I'm sure you've never heard of her, is equestrian named Charlotte Desjardins from Great Britain. Yeah, no, I've <laughs> I've never never heard of her, but I do have a fun fact. The oldest U.S. competitor is a 59-year-old equestrian, and his horse is 16 years old, which is the youngest U.S. Olympian trying out or participating. So, so you've never heard of Charlotte du- <laughs> du- I don't know how to say it. Dujardine? I don't get that. <laughs> it's spelled stupid. I can't wait to see the, the I spelling. That. It's D-U-J-A-R-D-I-N. Yeah, Dujardine? I don't know. Yeah. I don't Move know. on. Nobody doesn't cares. matter. But apparently she's a pretty decorated Olympian from Great Britain. She's tied for the most medals with another girl and she was set this year to win more medals and surpass the other girl to become like Great Britain's most decorated Olympian. In any sport, right? Not in just equestrianism? Correct. Okay. The girl that she's tied with, I'm pretty sure, is a runner. Or maybe she's bicycles. I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> a cyclist? This isn't about her. Yeah. I don't know. But this Charlotte it's like English isn't your once... first language sometimes. <laughs> the Charlotte lady. <laughs> it is my first language, but not British English. This is <laughs> not when they put use in, in words that don't belong. Yeah, it's like that's why we got rid of that. Okay, so. That's why Taylor Swift broke up the, with her European boyfriend or British boyfriend, huh? Yeah, even Taylor Swift's back on the American game. Let's go. <laughs> so this lady's won six medals in team and individual dressage. And that's a equestrian thing? Yeah, it's where they make the horsies dance. Oh, know. I do like that. Do you? Okay. I mean, I think it's really interesting that they can do. I can't make a horse dance. Okay. Yeah. How do you make a tissue dance? Oh, there's a reason Put you a little can. boogie in it. hey Yeah. Well, last week, a video became public of her whipping a horse in the legs with a long whip like 24 times in a row. Oh, jeez. Like 24 times? Yeah. And to be fair, we know absolutely nothing about dressage or horses or anything about any of this. But the video was disgusting to watch. Did you watch it? And apparently... Oh, yeah. It's all over the news, dude. I I don't want to watch it. Yeah. And apparently it's big time against the rules. I mean, good. That sounds like animal cruelty. Yeah, of course. They're allowed to use these long whips in training, but there's strict guidelines on how they're allowed to use them. They're allowed to use them to, like, tickle the back of their legs because they have to be far away from them with the ropes. So they need these long things to be able to tickle their legs or, like, (laughs) tap them. Okay. But they're definitely not supposed to whip them. They're not supposed to be used as punishment. No, those are very different things between whips and tickles. Yes. They're not supposed to be used as punishment. So... Um, she was suspended, obviously, and backed out of the Olympics. She actually kind of like backed out because I think she knew the video was coming out. And then they suspended her for six months. Was it Great Britain that suspended her or was it? I don't know if it was Great Britain's Olympic Committee or the Olympics in general. I don't know. But she's been suspended. And obviously she can't compete in the Olympics, which she had already pulled out of anyway, because I they gave her like a day to be like, you want to get ahead of this? <laughs> So (laughs) you want to come out a little on top and a bunch of like big time sponsors have dropped her, which is the only way really Olympians make money because they don't make money competing. Right. They make money with sponsorships. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, And she did release a statement saying that, you know, a bunch of the I'm sorry, I got caught bullshit and how it's out of her character to do this and blah, blah, blah. Mm, I don't know about that. Of course not, because it's definitely out of my character, and you couldn't pay me to whip an animal with anything. Right? So, <laughs> yeah, good point. Like, it's not just something that you just <laughs> randomly one day, and like, oh, yeah, let me just do this one day out of, like, no. This is, yeah, she's sorry she got caught. Exactly. Anyway. Exactly. So this is a real stain on the equestrian stuff at the Olympics, because that's already been a pretty hot topic for quite a few years you know a lot of people think that we shouldn't be using horses to win medals because we have big egos yeah i mean there's a lot of people who think we shouldn't be using animals for any kind of entertainment at all it well, especially because you know they're whipping them to get them to dance right. and that's gross yeah i agree with that 100 so. percent. is that how they make the horses dance they whip them no and and i will say the equestrian community is outraged which is good but okay. even if there is rules against them not doing this 
they're obviously doing it. <laughs> like, there's video proof of this bitch doing it. Right. So the credibility of the entire sport kind of takes a blow because this is video evidence proof of what people think is happening, happening, you know? Yeah, totally. So even if she's just a one-off, it's it's a good argument for everybody to be like, it doesn't matter. If, even if it only happens once, it's happening. And she's obviously very so. decorated, too, so... She's been doing this for a long time. She has been doing it a long time, and the argument has been going on for a long time. Like, it's not a new argument. You know, the modern pentathlon, the wild one where they run, swim, shoot, sword fight, and then jump horses? No, I have I have not heard of that. Yeah, it's one of the games at the Olympics. It's called the modern pentathlon. Anyway, well, they have to that's compete in, like, five things. They have to run, swim, shoot, sword fight, and then jump on a horse they've never met before and jump it over fences. Well, they've already decided that this Paris 2024 Olympics is going to be the last time we'll ever see that because they're changing the horse jumping portion of the pentathlon to an obstacle course because too many many horses get hurt during the, like it's oh man not good well i'm glad no more horses are getting hurt yeah but the charlotte idiot might have sealed the deal on the future of the rest of the events involving horses at the olympics like this could be a huge you think this could be it i don't know i mean it's going to be it at some point they're not going to let this go on forever and this is a huge stain on you know their argument has been we treat these horses really well you know, they're super cared for, they're loved, they're immaculately taken care of. And this video proves, like, obviously not. Well, I mean, yeah, it sounds like, you know, maybe a lot of people do, but, you know, yeah. this one who's the top of her game. Who aren't. Yeah, yeah. So there's that, and that kind of sucks for her country, because I'm pretty sure they were banking on her. <laughs> <laughs> like, her career's ruined. Even if they only keep that six-month ban that they put on her, all her sponsors have dropped her, and her reputation is just down the toilet. How old is she? I have no idea. And to be honest, I don't know the animal cruelty laws in England, but I would assume that somebody's been kind of like looking into that and maybe take her other animals away if this is how she treats animals. That's kind of what I was thinking, too. Yeah, it's crazy. There's also some controversy about the timing of this video coming out, you know, just a couple of days before the Olympics started. Like, they were all already in Paris. The horses, the competitors, everything. Oh, really? Oh, I, that, before true. This I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Like, she's probably been there for a week or more. Yeah, it just came out last Tuesday because it takes the horses longer to acclimate to traveling than it does the athletes. So, anyway... There's some interesting controversy about the timing, though, because apparently this video was filmed at least two years ago, according to the whistleblower who sent it in. This Charlotte lady says it was filmed four years ago, but this whistleblower says two years. Why hang on to it and just release it now, then? Well, that's the controversy. It's like, it's obviously a competitor who doesn't want her to compete in the Olympics. Because if they would have released it two years ago, she would have already served her six-month ban and been eligible to participate in the Olympics. This is like a modern UK Nancy Kerrigan, um, Tanya Harding situation. Yeah, which is pretty shitty for those horses. Because if this is something that she does all the time, which I'm sure, I mean, there's video proof she's at least done it once. Right. So obviously this whistleblower didn't give a shit about the welfare of those horses. True. Because they yeah. waited two years to set, like, what if she's been doing this to other horses for two years? You know, how yeah. many horses have been abused in the time that this person held on to that video? So that's really sad that the Olympics makes people so greedy for medals and accolades that they would put animals in danger just to wait till the right time to release it. It's like, oh my gosh. Dude, Erica, breaking news. We have a name of the Irvine Jane Doe. No way. Yeah. Marcia Thomas. She was 14 years old and she went missing from Reno, Nevada. What? Yeah. Do you just surf the internet while we record our podcast? What, no. How did that come up? An email came in from our YouTube thing and on, on that one. So I clicked on it to be like, okay, what's the comment? And I Googled it real quick and it says, yeah, young girl found murdered, set on fire in Southern California, identified. That's crazy. I have Google alerts on that. On every case we've done, and I haven't got a new Google alert. Marcia Sheary Thomas, 14, missing child from Reno, Ugh. according to Irvine Police Department. Wow. Yeah. I hope I didn't screw you up too much. No, I'm I'm glad she got her name back. I just, 14, ugh. Yeah, I know. Terrible. Baby. So, all right. Well, God, that's, that's rough. <clears throat> Sorry well, to break it to you that way, but I just saw it. That's right. I'm just trying to figure out how to transition back into this episode. That was crazy. So, <laughs> all right. Well, 
for the second sketchy thing going on at the Olympics, as if the first one isn't bad enough, this one is unbelievable. All right. Hit me with it, because I'm ready. That first one was pretty bad, so what else is there? What else is going on with these Olympians? Okay, so there's a Dutch men's volleyball player named Steven van de Velde. I'm sure that's not how you say it, but I love that that's how you I'm pronounce it. 98% sure that's how you say it. Van de Velde? Van, whatever, it doesn't matter, he's a dick. Van de Velde Industries? That's a Seinfeld joke for all of our listeners out there. Okay, so this guy's going to the Olympics. And that sounds fine on its face until you find out that he is a child rapist. What? A ch- yep. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's yep. a child rapist in the Olympics this year? Yes. He was convicted of raping a 12-year-old girl in the oh UK. Oh, my God. Yep. In August of 2014, he met a 12-year-old girl on the internet, and there's some reports that said that they have talked for up to two years before they met so she would have been 10 if that's true oh my god Mm -hmm. but i couldn't find any court documents or anything like that saying that she was 10 that's just random media reports that i saw but i mean either way whether she's 10 or 12 doesn't matter 10 to 12 i mean god yeah this is like let's keep going so that's not talking to a 10 or 12 year old on the internet it's called grooming there's (laughs) a word for it yeah so he then flew to England to meet her, and over a couple of days, he gave her alcohol and raped her. Oh, Jesus. And this guy is in the Olympics? hmm And a lot of reports at the time says that he gave her alcohol and then they had sex, which I would like to correct all those reports because a 12-year-old cannot have sex. They can't consent to sex. It's right. rape. Oh, my God. Like, I, I'm sorry, but you can't downplay it like that. You can't. That's that's gross. Yeah, you got to call it what it is. Even if she was like, yeah, this yeah. is like she can't consent to that. Exactly. He then returned to the Netherlands like nothing happened. And according to the New York Times, he was caught because he advised his victim to go to a clinic and get the morning after pill. Uh, I don't mean to laugh, but like he's not even yeah. smart about how he's doing it. Right. So, obviously, her age was a huge red flag because they're like, hey, you won. Right. Yeah. You shouldn't need this. And two, like, you're so, like, I don't even know if they can give that to her, you know? So, that, oh my God. that was a problem. And the authorities were notified. So, in January of 2016, he was extradited to England to face charges. And in March of 2016, he pled guilty to three counts of rape, including... Rape of a child under the age of 13. Jesus. Yep. So he admitted it. Like he's guilty by his own admission. 100%. He says this is what he did and he pled guilty. Yep. What? He should not be allowed in the Olympics or near anybody. Yeah. No kidding. So the judge in England sentenced him to four years in prison. That's it? Mm Mm-hmm. And a lifetime membership to their violent and sexual offender registry, which is like their sex offender registry like ours. I mean, he needs a lifetime membership to their prison and the sex yeah. offender registry. Like, that's crazy. Who? 100%. Four years for that. That's out out of yeah. control. Like, who's yeah. the judge? Prince An- Andrew? <laughs> <laughs> no. But, Okay. In this sentencing, though, the judge talked about how this shattered his dreams of becoming an Olympian and how his career was ruined and blah, 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 poor him. I've only read a few articles about the lifelong effects this had on his victim. You know, she went on to inflict self-harm and drug use and overdosing and all kinds of shit. So thankfully, her identity has been protected pretty well because she was so young. But of course, in the sentencing, they just feel bad for the rapist's career. You know? Oh, no way. I know. They did that a few years ago here with that. I don't remember. Yeah, he, Brock Turner. Yeah, yeah, there you go. He goes by Alan now, by the way. Oh. Just so you know, out in the world. So if you meet an Alan Turner. Yeah, like that guy shouldn't have been allowed to swim either, and he wasn't. This guy shouldn't be allowed to play volleyball at anywhere. So either way, he went to prison. Should be the end of this story. But if you don't think a four-year prison sentence is long enough, then you're going to be pretty upset when you find out that he was sent back to the Netherlands because of some treaty that they have to serve his sentence in his home country. And when he got back there, they decided to downgrade his child rape charges to a charge of fornication 
and released him after only what? serving one year. Yep. What? Yeah. So his extremely low sentence of four years was then lowered even farther to a year. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Like, yeah. So he was. Do they not have other tall people to play volleyball in the Netherlands? Is that why? I don't know. He made some shitty statement in 2017 after his release calling all the media around his charges nonsense and that the term pedophile shouldn't apply to him. What? You know, it, except that it does because he is a pedophile and <laughs> that's how we're going to refer to him for the rest of this episode. I mean, convicted self, like he admitted it himself. He's a pedophile. Right. Right. But, like we're not defaming him. He said that's what he is. Yeah. But he says that's nonsense, Grant. In uh, what other context could somebody be a pedophile? It yeah. is insane to me that anybody would think that this guy would not qualify as a pedophile. Like, it, he is the yeah. definition well, of Well, this it. is just him downplaying what he did, you know? And the Dutch Volleyball Association allowed him to return to competing, so they obviously don't give a fuck about what he did. Yeah, that's wrong. So, yeah, so he just goes back to business as usual. No remorse, no accountability, just like one year in prison and then a shit statement saying it was nonsense. And like you said, it's not like he was wrongly convicted or he swears he's innocent. Like he admits to this and then says, but I'm not a pedophile. It's like, yeah, okay. I mean, I'm pretty like this guy, this guy could qualify for the death penalty in my opinion. Of course. So, which is funny because you're super anti the death penalty. So I am. I am. And I will say since our break and, you know, having this baby and stuff, like if you heard a baby, like I was already pretty much like, you know, lock the key and throw you up the river. But no, like I'm, you're going to drown too. You know, like that's just, yeah. there's no <laughs> yeah. way. There's just no way. Yeah. Like these kids are perfect. Yeah. So either way, it's been a controversy and the National Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children in England condemned his comments and attitude and they called him out big time for being a pedophile with no remorse. And it's like, oh, poor me. Now my volleyball is overshadowed by this true story about how <laughs> yeah. I'm a pedophile. You know, it's like, OK. Sorry, so dude. It became international news this year when he was selected to represent the Netherlands in the Paris Olympics. And the public outrage started pretty immediately. I'm glad but it did. Yeah, but instead of deciding that it would be inappropriate and dangerous to reward a pedophile with a trip to Paris where there are hundreds of underage athletes all staying in a literal dorm yep. together, the Dutch Olympic Committee decided it was cool to rape kids as long as you're good at playing sports because they're like, no, we're still going to send him. Like, it's fine. So they doubled down and said, no, we're sending him. We don't really give a fuck if his victim has to watch him on TV, be glorified for his athleticism. Unreal. Or if he makes other athletes uncomfortable or if we're putting other athletes at risk by him being around underage kids. I mean, just thinking of gymnastics alone, they're 16-year-olds. Yeah. Like, yeah. just that. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it probably doesn't get much younger than that, in all honesty, but... No, Still. it doesn't. But that's not the point. There's tons of kids there watching uh, the Olympics. Absolutely. But this is that's despicable. So the sum of their statements, and I am definitely paraphrasing here, is he is reformed and married with a child. So he's a good guy now. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. That's pretty he, much the gist of their statements. He made his own victim. Nice. Yeah. And their argument is that he's complied with all the requirements that he's been forced to comply with <laughs> since being released <laughs> and that he served his time and should be able to participate just like anybody else. Unbelievable. People who are good at sports get off with so much shit. But I would argue that by saying he did not serve his time. No, he absolutely didn't. He was sentenced didn't. to four years and he served barely a quarter of it and you let him out to play volleyball. So he didn't serve his time. Like, that's a shit argument. That and argument changed goes his down the sentence drain. To, like, and changed yeah. his sentence to make it look not so bad. It's like, he raped mm -hmm. a 12-year-old. Yeah. And their attitude is like, what's the big deal? He's been playing for a few years now, but now it's a problem because he made the Olympics. It's like, yeah, dick, most of the world doesn't follow Dutch volleyball until the Olympics. <laughs> right? So now that people know about it, it's a problem, <laughs> obviously. If they would have known about it then, it would be a problem then. We just didn't know. That's crazy. That's so yeah. weird that they're just like, that's yeah, fine. Don't worry about it. 
And they're saying that he's reformed and that his risk of recidivism or reoffending is low. So, you know, now that he's married and has a baby, they're like, he's a good guy. It's fine. His, no. his risk is really low. And they're confident that he isn't a threat to the other athletes or anybody at the Olympics. But their actions are saying different because he has special requirements that ban like he's not allowed to stay in the Olympic Village. Oh, no. Good. Right, which is good. At least somebody's looking out for those girls. But it's like, obviously, you're not fully confident if you're not letting him stay in the Olympic Village. Yeah. And they put special requirements on him that he is not allowed to talk to the media during the Olympics. What? But that's, again, a benefit for him because now he doesn't have to face questions about being of a Of course. Pedophile. Of course. Yeah. Oh, man, that's awful. That's the worst thing going on in the Olympics by a mile. Oh, of course. Yeah. Which is really sad because they're pretty much putting out the idea that if you smoke weed, which is definitely not performance enhancing, you don't get to play in the Olympics, but we don't give a shit about raping kids. I know exactly you what you're talking about. You want to them. Yeah. Shakari, Shakari Richardson missed the last Olympics because she smoked weed because her mom died and she was grieving. Yeah. And this guy's out yeah. here diddling kids and it's no big deal. Right. Which weed is not going to make you run faster. I promise you. <laughs> yeah. 100% about that. Yeah, so it's not performance enhancing. I understand it's a banned substance, and she she took her punishment and whatever, but it's like, how come we can ban somebody for smoking weed, but we can't ban somebody for a violent sexual offense against a child? That's crazy. So, And the actual Olympic Committee could probably, I'm sure, say no to him, even though the Dutch Olympic Committee let him, but they're also like, yeah, no, we're going to let him play, so... That's crazy. Yeah. And there is people who are apparently okay with pedophiles because there's been a few other famous athletes, like some lady named Paula Radcliffe. I don't know who she is. She's another British lady. Some famous runner, I guess. Hmm. I don't know that one. And when she was interviewed about it, she's like, well, we allow people who cheat in sport and take drugs to come back and compete. He was 19 and he served his jail time. So apparently other people think that smoking weed or doping is equal to child rape. So... That's crazy. No, I just, I don't understand like in what context anybody's like, yeah, we can look past that. That's no big deal. I know. And their argument is like, well, he served his time. Doesn't he deserve a second chance? It's like, he didn't serve his time. That's my big argument is that he didn't serve his time. Yeah. I'm, I'm right there with you. Like, and even if he did four years, wasn't enough. A year is especially not enough. Like he, and he should have his life taken away. This the girl who he changed for the rest of her life. He yeah. should have his and, sports life taken away. Yeah. And that's the other thing is going to the Olympics is not a right. It's a privilege. So it's Very something true. that should be taken away. Like even if he had served his jail time and was reformed and trying to make something of his life, fine, go do that somewhere else. Like you don't get to be on the world stage and be glorified and all that. Like, no, that's a privilege to right. do that, not a right. And then if they medal, he gets an award for, you know, for that on top of it. So yeah, no, I'm 100% for that. By the way, did you know that yeah. these medals have um, pieces of the uh, Eiffel Tower embedded into them? Oh no, that's crazy cool though. That's cool, huh? Yeah. So anyway, so these scandals are kind of gross and I guess I could have been a little more neutral on my opinion about these creeps, but... I feel like these two, they really, yes. they kind of speak for themselves. Dude, sex crimes against kids and hitting animals, like, come on, you guys. Both pretty low, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's like, come on. And I definitely think there's a huge difference in violent sexual offenses against kids and and doping. I really, I know we joked percent, about yeah. at the beginning about, like, let them dope. Who cares? It makes it more interesting. I don't obviously really think that, like... I think that the doping stuff should be equal across the board. Nobody should be doping, you know, whatever. But I do think there's a big difference in that and raping a kid. Uh, yeah, I would certainly, certainly say so. Like, absolutely. Yeah. So since they're letting him play, I hope that he gets publicly booed and the Netherlands get knocked out at the first chance and that all this publicity around this only helped to let the world know that he's a pedophile. Like, I hope he doesn't win anything out of this. I hope all of this was just to make his face known. Yeah, I hope so, too. I hope that he is so. plastered all over. Everyone knows exactly who he is and the type of guy that he is. Yeah, because he'll get to play at least three or four games. Yeah. So 
if you want to see what this pedophile looks like, go to our Instagram. We'll post a picture of him. But also they play against Italy on the 28th, Chile on the 31st, and Norway on August 2nd. And I have never rooted for another country in the Olympics before, but fucking go Italy, Chile, and Norway. You're you're rooting against one this year. Yeah. Hell yeah. We'll see. Anyway, um, we should have gone over some of the lighter, like, cheating scandals that are, like, where nobody got hurt. <laughs> like, like the doping things? Yeah, like Lance Armstrong getting banned, or... There was a U.S. runner, too, Marion Jones, I think was her name, and she was stripped of all her medals and banned. So, again, to my point against that Paula Radcliffe lady, they don't always let them come back. Sometimes they're banned for life. Well, it sounds... I mean, from what you're saying, though, the United States is much more firm on those kinds of things than the rest of the world, or at least Norway. Yeah. Or the Netherlands, Netherlands. Like the International Olympic Committee are the people who ban them forever. Oh. I mean, you could be banned by your own country too, but the Olympic Committee is the ones who ban you like forever. Like there was some East German losers in like 1968 and they were disqualified because they heated their luge sled (laughs) blade things, which is genius, but also very illegal. But my favorite one is that Boris... Onashenko guy from Soviet Union, that sword fighter guy. You remember oh. how, like, when they sword fight, it's electrified and their suits light up green and stuff? No, I didn't know that. So when they then they hit, they get green or red or whatever. Yeah, and it's all like electrical circuits, like when they're they call them foils, I think, or whatever. I think that's what they thing. call the swords. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. When it touches the opponent, it like c- completes a circuit and it sends like an electrical thing so they that's how they clock the points oh and somehow it was like it was uh soviet union 76 so i feel like that's cold war stuff right and he was like real adamant he was like the returning champion and he wanted to win and all this stuff and he rigged his sword they have a name and i can't think of it the Um, foil right that's what it's called no i think the foil i feel like is the tip i think the sword's called something else i don't know it doesn't matter he rigged his to where when he like thrusted it, it clocked a point instead of like having to touch the, <laughs> which is super smart. Oh, but that's funny. Way cheating, you know. And it took until the second round before an opponent was like, "Hey, what the hell? He didn't even touch me, and he got a point. What the hell?" That's so, hysterical. Yeah, and they took away his sword to like investigate it. And they let him keep competing, and he went, like, another five rounds and won, like, four out of the five of them. So he was already sword. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was good. He was set to, like, win everything. He's straight but up Barry he Bonds. To, like... He was already really good and just was like, yep. I'm going to cheat to see how much better I can be. Yep. He wanted to make sure he won, you know? So anyway, they figured it out before the end of the Olympics that year or whatever, even though he was already winning. They investigated his sword, and they were like, yeah, this is rigged. What the hell? So they boost it like he was banned for life he was never allowed to compete again i'd rather i'd rather ban a sex offender for life than this guy but whatever definitely i do i think he should have been banned for that olympics for sure and like his shit should be tested way way better the next time but like (laughs) right you're gonna ban this guy for life for being cheating and being kind of (laughs) smart about it but this other guy like come on i agree i agree um so well real quick what do you call an arrogant fugitive falling from a building? Uh, you call that condescending. Ah, condescending. Good one. <laughs> good one. That was good. Wasn't bad. I Wasn't did. bad. I was like almost there, but I was never going to get there. Good. I'm glad. All right. Well, we'll be back to our regular scheduled programming soon, guys. Thanks for hanging with us through this crazy <laughs> summer that we've had. Yeah, it's been wild. But hey, we're back now. So enjoy. All right. Love you. All right. Love you too. Bye. This podcast has been a production of Orange Halo Media, LLC, hosted by Grant and Erica. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. To chat with us, go to From Crime to Crime on Instagram, From Crime to Crime on TikTok, From Crime the Number 2 Crime on Twitter, or you can visit our website at FromCrime2Crime.com. See you next Wednesday.